In this video I'd like to explain to you how to use Microsoft Expression Encoder 4 to capture your screen. First I'd like to show you how to download this program in case you want to install it on your computer at home. In order to download this program just type in Microsoft Expression Encoder 4 in Google and usually the first result will get you to this page. Once you arrive at this page just click on download and follow the instructions from there. If you're using the school computer, the tech department will download it for you. Once it's downloaded to your computer, there are a few different ways to access this program. If you've used this program recently, you can access it from your recently used programs. Otherwise, you can click on all programs. And these, of course, are arranged in alphabetical order. So you scroll down until you arrive at Microsoft Expression. And once you click on that folder, all your tools are right inside the folder. When you're ready to record a video, the first thing you need to do is click on this Microsoft Expression Encoder 4 screen capture. Notice how we have another one down here, but this one's to edit your video. Right now we just want to capture what we're doing on the screen. Now since this is already running, I'm going to show you what it looks like in the PowerPoint through screenshots, what happens after you click that. So after you click the Microsoft Encoder screen capture, there's going to be a box that pops up that looks like this. First thing you need to do is click on the record button and you also need to make sure that this microphone is lit up red. That way it accesses the computer's microphone so it can capture your voice. Once you click the record button it's going to pop up a red box that looks like this. Anything on the inside of this red box is what the encoder will capture. So you can make it capture only a small area or you can make it capture the entire screen like I have it set up for this video. Once you set your screen size, you're going to click record, and it's going to do a countdown from three. Once it hits one, it'll make a little sound, and you'll be live. When you're ready to stop your video, there are a couple different ways to stop it. If you've set it up to only capture a small portion of your screen, you'll see this box that runs consistently throughout the video. You can just click the stop icon. If you have it set up like I have this video set up, where it captures the entire screen, then you can find your stop icon in your system tray. And notice how we have Microsoft Expression Encoder 4. Just click on that and then click stop. Once you click stop, it's going to pop a box up that looks like this one. And you'll notice your most recent recording will be highlighted in gray. You're going to click send to encoder. Once your encoder opens up, it's going to look like this. Notice on the bottom, we have a few different ways to edit videos. I haven't used these too often. Usually I use the editing tools in YouTube to edit my videos. But the important part of this encoder is this is the part that allows it to be compatible with YouTube. The first thing we need to do to get it compatible with YouTube is we're going to click on encoding quality. Just click best quality and click apply. The next step is the important step. In order for it to be compatible with YouTube, it needs to be in a WMV format. In order to get it there, we click on Encoding for Devices, and then click on WMV, and then click on Microsoft Xbox 360 HD 1080p. After you click on that, click Apply. The last step is click on Video. Most of the time, it's already in the correct format, but just make sure that this is on CBR one pass. Once all these are set up, you can click encode. Now this kind of depends on how long your video is. It will depend on how long this takes. This could take quite a while if you have a longer video. And while we're here, notice how some of these are locked. Uh, this is the free version of Microsoft Encoder, so some of our features aren't available. Uh, the biggest thing about the free version is it only records for 10 minutes at a time. So after 10 minutes, it'll pop up a box that tells you that your time has expired. And if you want to make a video longer than 10 minutes, you'll just have to record the second portion of your video and combine it using YouTube Video Editor. Now that this is encoded, we're ready to upload it to YouTube. The first thing we need to do is make sure that you are logged into YouTube. 
I'm going to go back to the home screen so we can see what it looks like from the start. So in order to log into YouTube, of course, the first thing we do is, is uh, just click on the sign-in icon, and you're just signing in as if you were signing into your Gmail. Same information. Once you've signed in, you're going to click on Upload. And then we're going to click on Select Files to Upload. From there, we're going to scroll down on this side until we see Documents. We're going to double-click it and click it once. And then we're going to scroll down on this side until we find a folder called Expression. And we're going to double-click it and double-click it again. And then double-click Output. When we get into this folder, notice how these are arranged according to the time and date that they were recorded. So notice this one here was recorded 2-17-2016 at about 2.54. Once you find the folder you want, you double click it, and then you're going to click on the screen capture folder and click open. Notice how it's uploading and processing here, and this is another process that could take some time if you have a longer video. So while this is processing, a couple things we can do is, in this box we can rename this. We could also give it a description. A lot of times I'll go to advanced settings and I'll uncheck the allow comments and allow users to view the ratings. Uh, you don't have to do this. Uh, it's just a few different settings that, that you can choose to check off if you want them. After you've set this all up, you're going to click publish and it's going to take you to a screen and this is your link. So this is the link that you would give people who you would want to view your videos. The last thing I'd like to show you is just how I use this in my classroom. Uh, I use this a lot of times with the smart board where I can write something on my smart board while I'm explaining something so it, it creates a great opportunity to reteach. Uh, sometimes I'll use it with Microsoft Word where I can type a paper up and explain to kids some of the steps to writing a paper. Uh, there's all kinds of, of ideas and ways that this can be used. The final thing I want to go over is who to contact. Uh, if you are having trouble with this or you want some more information about this, you can t contact Mrs. Davis and her email address is posted in this area here. Or you can contact me, my email address is posted here, and we would be happy to help you out. Thanks for taking the time to view this video explaining how to use Microsoft Expression in Coder 4.